so back to the channel guys in yet another chess video and today in this video i am going to again show you a game of mine in which i wasn't able to actually play well but i think the reason i won this game is that because my opponent wasn't able to find most accurate moves at most crucial times otherwise he was completely winning this game but he made some inaccuracies uh, th that helped me to actually get back in the game so let's see how this game went so in this game i was playing with the black pieces and opponent opens up with e4 i replied with e5 knight to f3 knight to c6 and after bishop to b5 this is the royal lopez opening or the spanish game after knight to f6 opponent played d3 i i played bishop to d6 opponent played h3 and i played a6 kicking away the bishop bishop moved to a4 and i again played b5 gaining another tempo on the bishop and the bishop moved to b3 and i played bishop to c5 and i was planning to maybe play d6 and followed by bishop to b7 in the future which is what actually happened happened in the game as after a3 i simply castled king side opponent did the same thing and i finally played d6 so after rook to e1 i played knight to a5 attacking uh, his bishop and asking him ask him asking him whether you want to give me the bishop pair or not so he said he said no and retreated his bishop to a2 and now i played c6 and blundered a clean fork b4 and after b4 i will end up losing one of my piece either the bishop or the knight and my opponent also missed the move and uh, instead he played bishop to g5 and I, I again missed this move and played queen to b6 instead preparing for bishop takes on f2 check to win his rook and not to win his rook but to gain material advantage as he will also be able uh, will also be able to take back my bishop so he defends the f2 square via queen to d2 and again misses the move b4 and now i actually saw the move b4 so i pushed b4 myself and he pushed a4 he didn't want it to open things up that's why he played a4 i continued with b3 and now here c takes on b3 is forced and after i played knight takes on b3 B F bishop takes on b3 and queen takes on b3 and in this position this allowed him to play bishop takes on f6 and trade his bishop for my knight to bust open my king side as after g takes on f6 my pawn structure on king on my king side is weak and it allow it allowed queen's penetration on the uh, f uh, h6 square actually so that's what happened in the game he played queen take queen to h6 preparing to play queen takes on f5 uh, yeah so queen takes on f5 and then followed by knight to g5 so i continued development with bishop to e6 and he played queen takes on f6 as expected and i also played queen takes on d3 i thought let's grab a couple of pawns myself and now he played knight to c3 have she simply develops another piece and now i played d5 and he played knight to g5 as expected i was already expecting this so this is nothing new so after d takes on e4 opponent played knight c takes on e4 and now the situation on my or si king side was getting scarier move my move by move by move as he slowly was bringing 
a new piece into the attack so i was uh, getting scared of all this as anyways i continued with bishop to b4 and attacked his rook and she she played queen to h6 threatening checkmate on h7 square so i just i also saw this and defended by playing bishop to f5 as it was the only move in this position that saves the checkmate however knight to f6 check is on the board and there is just too much pressure on the h7 square both of both both of his knights and the queen are attacking it so i just moved my king to h8 and he played rook takes on e5 so, so he was saying to me that i will first take your bishop and then checkmate you and i was smart enough to not fall into this trick and retreat my bishop to g6 and in this position as you can see all of my both of my queen and the light squared bishop are quite passive because they have to defend the king so they cannot do anything and because of this my both of my rooks and dark squared bishop are also not able to do any, anything rather than seeing my king side burn so anyways my opponent continued with the move h4 and i played bishop to d2 so in this position on after before playing bishop to d2 i all uh, already calculated rook uh, rook to d1 and bishop takes on g5 so after bishop to d2 many of you may ask wait cannot white play rook to d1 and pin your bishop well yes that's what happened in the game opponent played rook to d1 and pinned my bishop but i also calculated that after my bishop will take the g5 knight opponent's queen will also be under attack and if he will take my queen i'll also take his queen gaining a material advantage a piece advantage so that's all that i cal that was all this is all that i calculated and i played bishop takes on g5 simply but one thing that i wasn't able to calculate is that he can also take my rook via queen takes on f8 check and sacrifice his queen for my rook and after rook takes on f8 he simply took my queen via rook takes on d3 and i took his undefended knight via bishop takes on f6 now both of his rooks are hanging so he played rook e2 e3 to save at least one of the rooks by but instead of taking the rook and simplifying this into a winning end game i grabbed the pawn instead on b2 with my bishop and opponent played rook to d6 attacking my c6 pawn and i simply played rook to c8 to defend it and uh, opponent played rook to e7 and he blundered bishop to a3 skewer so i played bishop to a3 and skewered both of his rooks and i land up winning one of them which is what happened in the game as after rook d to d7 i played bishop takes on e7 and after rook takes on e7 i was already up a piece which means i was winning this so i pushed the c5 pawn he started to bring his king into the game via king to f1 i gave him a check via bishop to d3 check king to e1 and now i pushed c4 king to d2 and rook to d8 king to c3 and now i played bishop to f1 going after the g2 pawn so he played g3 to save the pawn and now i played rook to d3 check opponent played king to c2 and now i played king to g7 as the f7 pawn was also hanging so i got i had to save it so after rook to e, a7 uh, in this position it i took 24 seconds i thought for all 24 seconds to and i came to a conclusion that i should play the move rook to a3 because after rook takes on a6 which is what happened in the game i quickly pushed c3 
and gaining a tempo and opening up a discovered attack on his rook. He saw it and played rook to c6. I took his pawn and he took mine. But I had this move rook to a2 check and this move help, helped me to gra grab his f2 pawn and I am again up a piece because the extra pawn that he had is vanished now. So after rook to c4, there it is, there he goes and he completely blundered his rook and I took it via bishop takes on c4 and it was in this position on move number 46 that my opponent resigned the game as there was nothing much to be done here. This is dead lost position for white and white just cannot do anything and with except for getting checkmated so that's why he resigned in this position but i will really appreciate the way he attacked my king and this will surely teach me something so that's it for today guys thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video